Around three months ago, a movement started here on this channel, one that I respect a lot. It is a movement surrounding Silkeborg in Denmark. Now, you might be wondering, what is he talking about? What movement? Well, three months ago, day one of asking you to rebuild Silkeborg, we are really doing bad at the moment. That came in from Tomato Guy 84 and you know what? If we scroll all the way up, the man has remained consistent and has now made it to day 107 much respect to you because there are so many people that constantly say like oh day 300 of asking for this rebuild but it's actually not day 300 it's like day one but this man has remained consistent which means we're going to be rebuilding silkeborg and we're going to be doing it utilizing youth academy from nordic countries only let's have some fun this is about to be incredible me likey taking a look at the team that we're going to be utilizing there are two talented players in here, or I should say the ones with highest potential. Lind, 66 rated, 79 potential. Bush, 65 rated, 79 potential. But don't get used to any of these players because as I mentioned before, we're going to be bringing in players through the Youth Academy that are coming through the Nordic countries. And for that, I made sure to ask ChatGPT. Here's the answer. It says the countries considered to be Nordic are Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden. Sometimes you just got to make sure. Also, the current situation of Silkeborg in real life is that they actually finished in a sixth position, which is a spot where you are going to be up against the top five teams consistently in the championship playoffs in order to make it to Europe or even win the title. Those are the areas that you have to get to. So this is a big step. Silkeborg in that sixth position, seemingly completely out of it with no chance to play for any of those spots. So I kind of understand why my man has been asking me to rebuild this team. They've only become uh, Danish champions once, apparently. Starting off by sending a scout out who is going to come in for 4 million, which is basically going to be our entire budget. We have like 4.5 million, but luckily we have another one right here that was already within the club by default. But... Barry McLeod is going to be the one that we're going to be sending out. And I'm going to be starting off by going into countries that I have been to already. I have been to Iceland. I have been to Norway. So I'm going to start off with the place that I personally think is the most magical and the most beautiful place on earth. It is going to be Iceland. And I will start off by looking for a giant of a goalkeeper. I think Icelandic men are kind of known for being giants. If I'm not mistaken, Hathor Bjornsson is like the strongest dude ever. So that should work out. Oh, and I also decided to go with the 4 triple 2 formation. I feel like it's quite easy to find players for striker, cam, CDM, and also all those defensive positions. Still, if you guys have any idea of how to like easily find center midfielders, please let me know. Throughout the entirety of FC24, I have struggled massively to find any center midfielders on this game. Either I get CDMs or I get center attacking mids. None of them really turn out to be center mids that are properly built for the position. As always, I will show you only the scat reports that actually turn out great because if I showed you every single one, you'd lose your mind. But this is the first. This is the first one I'm getting from Iceland. And I'm already seeing this guy could be class. Six foot five tall. And his name is written with an A and an E at the same time. Egir Olsen, 575k. I was kind of expecting a little bit more, but okay, we'll sign him up. 220k for this one. Seems to be a high potential. That's... Hold on a second. Are we just finding amazing goalkeepers everywhere? Okay, so we did sign two to start off with. And by the way, before we take a look into these players' stats, can we just talk about the international break? I hate it. I hate it with a passion, man. I... There's nothing that ruins my mood more than like knowing that this weekend there aren't going to be any club games that I actually enjoy watching. Am I the only person? Like I'm totally fine with tournament football, but international breaks ruin my mood. Anyways, let's dive in here and see what these guys are about. 58 rating. Okay. Then we have another 56 right there and then a 51. Okay. Starting goalkeeper, Egir Olsen. And then Pedersen. But I will scout for one more month just to make sure these are the best ones we have. Good thing I actually waited for another month because I was able to find another lad. So, Egir Olsen coming in with the 58. He's 6 foot 5, right? And he's 17 years old. Take a look at this one. Andersen, 59 rated. And 
He is six foot seven at the age of 15. Bro, imagine you're 15 and you're six foot seven. What? How odd would you be looking in school? Imagine you just sat there at your freaking desk and then like every, every normal person is like this, right? And then you are up here when you're sat down. This is nuts. Now we're going to be setting up the next part. And as I said, it's going to be no way. Now for no way, I was initially thinking defense, but then I realized, you know what? There's a specific man that is incredible. Haaland. I want my very own Haaland. So let's go strike her. Let's go, oops, sorry, three months, uh, striker or attacker, but physically strong because Haaland is quite physically strong. And that's exactly what I want to have up top too. Just realized my camera covered the space where I was basically scrolling through the positions. Sorry about that. Hey, no way. You disappointed me. I didn't expect this. Maybe I sent out the scout to look for the wrong things, but this is the only player I found who seemingly looked all right but not for the attacking position. He's supposed to be a right wing, but as you can see here, he has 60 to 70 defending and he's five foot eight. So I'm thinking this kid could potentially be like a right back, left back, maybe even a center back at five foot eight, which wouldn't be ideal. But let's see his initial rating right here. Sign him up. He comes in as a right wing, 50 rated, but very high potential, which gives me hope. So let's sign him and see. Please, can you play in a different position? And how high do you jump in your rating? From a right wing at 50 to, oh yes, plus 13. Okay, since he's five foot eight, I want him to be a right back. Yes, please, right back lad. You are going straight in there. Five star skill moves as well. Oh mate, this is gonna be amazing. Plus 13 is madness. No way, I still love you. Up next, I'm sending the scout to Finland to look for a center back who's physically strong. Why Finland up next? It's because I desperately want to see the Northern Lights. When I was in Iceland and in Norway, I didn't get to see them. So Finland is apparently one of the hot spots to go to to see those Northern Lights. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have seen the Northern Lights anywhere in the world. How was that feeling? It must be incredible to see that magic plane above your head in the sky. Magic. Three months of scouting in Finland has supplied us with a bunch of players. I mean, you can see it right here. A couple of them could go straight into the starting 11. It seems like every single one of them is a center back, but the good thing is some of them do have pace. So we could convert them into that left back position that still will be somewhat vacant. So with that, we have now brought in a bunch of players that fill up the entirety of our defense. So now we have a goalkeeper and a full defense. It is just a matter of time. First one is Aki Kinunen. He comes in with a 61 rating. Then it is Hemelainen. I am so sorry if I got that wrong. But luckily, there is two more whose name I can say right here. Another Hemelainen and another one. Hemelainen. That's it. I'm not going to say it again. Up next, we have to show some respect to the country in which league we are. We are going for Denmark. Defensive minded CDM. Let's run it. Right at the end of the season, Denmark coming in clutch. Two players are coming through. Sebastian Jensen, six foot three tall, hoping he's a CDM and he's worth 1.4 million. And you might be thinking, oh, that's great. Well, wait a second. We're signing him, but then take a look at Jonas Jakobsen. 2.2 million for this big one. Denmark de delivering massively for this side, which means both of them are gonna go straight into the team. I can tell you that much. Both of them being CDMs is massive as well. 63 rated that one and Jakobs in 66. I mean, these are the first talents that we have brought in that are actually somewhere around the rating of the team itself because most of the ones that we have brought in are a bit on the lower rating. So hopefully you guys appreciate these players coming in as much as I do. Jakobsen, no play styles, power shot for Jensen. Skill moves, nothing, none of that. I mean, they are CDMs to be fair, so it's all good. Denmark coming up clutch. Talking about coming up clutch, Silkeborg is in the relegation round and we came in in fourth place. And because we were in the bottom half of the league table at the end of the season, that meant we had to go into the relegation round. So yeah, still a long way to go to grow these players to get to the top of the league. Oh, here's the moment, by the way. It took him like 37 weeks to become a right back. 51-2. 
64. There we go, buddy. Now's your time to shine. Now it's finally time to send our scouts to Sweden. Yes, this is going to be an interesting destination as we start looking for more attacking players. This time around, center attacking mids. And we need two of them. Months of scouting in Sweden has worked out perfectly for us. Take a look at these players that we have found. Jesper Bengtsson, 575k. Philip Hansson, 825. Tobias Andersson with the mullet, 1.2 million. And then Tristan Axelsson coming in with 1.2 million as well. Sweden, thank you very much for everything you have provided our team with. Hopefully, one of these guys is usable. First of all, this man has been working to become a left back for a while, and now he is going to be. And there's another one that we're trying to turn into a left back in here as well, which is Oliver. So uh, these guys are going to be taking over the left back position, both from Finland. And we also have a great backup goalkeeper by now, by the way. Let's bring him in there. Um, but yeah, let's see the new lads. 62 rating, 62 rating. Very good stuff. I am going to be bringing in every single one of these into the team because we want to have two on the pitch and two as backups. The time has come to return to Iceland. So far, we only have a goalkeeper from that position, uh, from this country. So I am going for a striker. Iceland, deliver me some greatness, please. Iceland delivered. We have brought in possibly five incredible talents in these past months. Jakob Olsen, we're 525k. Not the best shooting on him, though. 44 to 54. So probably a backup because this man could be huge. Right midfield slash right winger, but definitely destined for striker. 60 to 70 shooting. 2.5 million. That's it, lads. That's exactly what we need. Sign him up. Then we have another one. Jakob Jensen coming in at 1.5 million. Again, not that great at shooting. But we can work on these things. Arnar Pedersen coming in with really good shooting, actually. 600k. And then Christopher Hansen with 525. With that, we could possibly be done scouting. And let's take a look at these players right now. Oliver turned into a left back. Bang. Doesn't go up in his rating. But he goes straight into the starting 11. I've been waiting for this one to be turned into a left back for a while. But here we go. Jensen is 67 rated. Oh my God, bro. As a striker, it takes him two weeks. No, sorry. Yeah, two weeks to get there, which is going to be exactly what we need to happen. So let's promote him instantly. And then Jensen, 63 rated winger as well. Let's turn him into a striker. 183 weeks. Oh, come on. That sucks, dude. Maybe Cam? Okay, Cam, two weeks. All right, we'll take that. And then on the other lads, Pedersen, 59 rated striker at least. So he can actually go into that position. He can go up in his skill moves as well. And then we have these lads as backups, which is fine enough. I'm actually very happy with the scat report. Iceland delivered again. First goalkeeper, now striker. Yet again, my friends, we end up in the seventh position. And with that, automatically in the second half of the league table, as Brundby get the win in the end. And in the relegation round, he actually came in fourth. So clearly, things haven't gone as well as I hoped. But these players are still growing. And some of them, after changing their position, are looking amazing. Jensen up to a 71 at this stage. I'm amazed by this. We also brought in the other Jensen now into the camp position. He's going to be competing with Axelsson right there. Uh, we have Andersson looking solid. Jensen, another Jensen. How many Jensens do I have? Uh, Jakobsen in here alongside Jensen. And then Oliver in the left back position finally taking over that spot and upgrading it. And uh, our center back's actually looking very good. Our right back looking amazing. And our goalkeeper has swapped around. It's actually Olsen now. Uh, I think this is Egir, isn't it? The one with the A and E in his uh, beginning of the name. He has taken over from Andersen. So congratulations to him. He has done that. Which actually makes the strikers the only Icelandic players. Actually, no. Olsen was Icelandic as well. Anyways, let's take a look at the stats here. We see our camps have gotten the most goals. And that is not good enough. Because these guys came in late into the season. I'm not going to really judge them on it. Jensen coming in with eight games and three goals. That's very good. And then Pedersen also with four goals for himself. But next season, 
I do expect a lot more where for the first time an entire starting 11 of Youth Academy players are going to play the full season. I expect us to be in the top half. Get ready for this appointment to settle in because we are looking at a team that has finished in the fifth position. Are you kidding? And that is in a relegation round. In the regular season, in ninth position, only 21 points after 22 games. What's wrong? The Nordic talents are amazing. They should be up there. They should be doing better. But as you can clearly tell, some of these players are maybe not up that level yet to be able to compete with the likes of Mitiland and others in this league who actually have some amazing talents, by the way. Nordsjaland as well. So many unbelievable players, specifically from Africa, end up at Nordsjaland and they turn out incredible. So... Yeah, much respect to this league. It just shows it's not an easy league to go in and conquer. This is a league where you have to earn the right to be at the top. So I'm very happy to see that it's not easy at the end of the day. Pedersen, 14 and 2. Jensen, 6 and 1. You're 75 rated, pal. I expected a little bit better from you. So we're going to go into the next season. This time, though, I think everyone is going to be above the 70 rating except the left back. And at that stage, surely you can make it into the championship round. Lads, I might cry because we have finally made it into the championship round. Silkeborg on 45 points in a fifth position. Initially, we came in in sixth. So it's even more impressive to see that we have gotten into that fifth spot. But the more it takes us to get to the top of this league and at some point get into European League football, it just like... I respect the league a lot more. I love the fact that this hasn't been an easy journey, but we do see, oh, everyone has gotten to a 70. I thought some players might not get there yet, but the entirety of our squad is seemingly completely ready to go with Axelson back into the starting 11, earning that spot back and lots of growth, a lot of growth, tons of it within this team, which I love to see. And actually, real quick, let's just do a playstyle check. Long throw plus. Yeah, sure, that's an important one. Trickster, nothing there. Anyone getting the plus? Oh, do they get the plus once they get to 80? Is that how it works? That's going to be interesting. I'm going to keep track of that because Jensen is the only one that has the plus at the moment. But let's quickly dive into the stats here. Axelson, yeah, no, no wonder he actually earned that spot back. The man has grown by plus 5, 11 and 3. Our striker Jensen coming up with 9 and 3. Anderson 8 and 5. The mullet obviously works out really well for this team. And then Pedersen coming in with 6 for himself. But lads, now that we have made it into the championship round, we have to work towards winning it. And that's not going to be easy either. Now, I didn't expect this much of a jump. First place, Silkeborg at the top. Tomato guy, you've been asking for this for over 100 days, and now it finally has happened. This is only the second title in Denmark for Silkeborg, because previously they did have one to their name. We did make it in the championship round, but initially we actually came in fifth, which makes it even more impressive. Well done, lads. Let's see the team that has done it. Jensen on an 84. Pedersen, 77. Axelson, 78. The Mullet on an 80. And then the CDMs looking ever so solid defensively. We are working on it. We are getting higher ratings. And the bench is not too shabby either. I want to see someone dominate with goals. Pedersen, 17 and 3. Very good, considering he's the lower rated striker, but a plus 6 for him this season. Axelson did well. Jensen coming in with 9 and 5. But I am realizing that there aren't that many games being played in this league. 34 is the max that you get throughout a season. But now that we qualified for European football, that's going to change. This season has gone even better. First place in the league in the regular season and then smashing it in the championship round and winning it all with a 17 point gap. Now in the cup itself, we didn't win it. That's another thing that we need to pay attention to. In previous seasons, we haven't done well in there. So let's take a look at the team. Actually, before I show you that, we did play in the Champions League, guys. We were in a group with Arsenal, AS Roma, and I believe Galatasaray, and they all took us apart. So that clearly shows you there is still room to grow. We might be dominating Denmark, but we are not yet dominating Europe. Looking at the team, though, I can tell you that if more players get to the level of Jensen right here, we are going to be crushing teams. So... 
yeah, this is looking very solid. 78 is the lowest rating we have, and that's okay. This team is going to get there. I fully believe in them, and I want to see the stats real quick. What do we have here? We have 34 and 5. Peterson, you are insane, my friend. Keep it up. In Europe, this season has been great. We actually played in Champions League football, got through the group stages, but then lost against Manchester United. In the round of 16, we did beat Liverpool, though. And that's a really good sign. Now, in the league itself, as we speak, once again, champions. 62 points and just a goal difference saving us, which is huge because initially we came in in second place. Copenhagen came in third, and then we bought, uh, we both fought it out at the end for that top position. Now, let's take a look at the team. Genze, 93. Lowest rating now is an 83 on our center attacking midfielder and our left back. The rest of the team is already getting to levels where you can say they are becoming world class. And here, look at the play style pluses on some of these boys. It is looking very, very exciting, except the long throw on a striker. Don't know how that's supposed to help me. But guys, this team now can compete in Europe. And Pedersen, I don't know how you do it. The other guy is so much higher rated than you consistently every season. And you still put out better numbers. Arnar Pedersen, you're my guy. Things are getting quite interesting here as we have beaten Napoli to then smash up Sevilla 5-1 and two games. And then Dortmund is not able to stop us 5-4 in the semi-final. That's Silke Borg has done it. Tomato guy, you should be proud of yourself. This is the moment we have been waiting for. It is up against AC Milan. All right, then. The Nordic Youth Academy talents are ready to step onto the pitch. Pedersen passed the 90 as he deserves it. This guy is special. He has acrobatic plus, which makes me wonder if I should just go ahead and punt the ball up to him and he just goes for a bicycle kick from outside the box. Anyways, this team's lowest rated player is an 88 rated left back and an 88 rated center attacking midfielder. Then you have Kinnunen here on an 89 and the rest is 90 plus. All of these guys have been found by our scouts. They have gone through the youth academy. They have become legends at this club right now and they are ready to take on AC Milan. Stats wise, Ederson again. My goat. You are the guy. Yes, Jensen might have been higher rated this whole time. You are the man. And then you have Axelsson doing better this season, I believe. 15 and 11. Anderson 14 and 10. Oliver 10 and 0. Jensen, no worries though. I still have faith in you. I think you can still provide us with a big moment in this Champions League final. Let's go ahead and take a look into the league table. I mean, it would be hilarious if we actually came in second place here. Okay, first place, dominant, only one loss throughout the entire uh, playoffs and zero losses through the regular season. Unbeaten, as it should be at this stage, to be honest. I do respect the Danish league, but at this point, we have outgrown it, obviously. So we need to step up on the biggest stage there is, the Champions League with Silkeborg. Is that a possibility? Rafa Leao, Nicholas Jackson, Take Fusakubo, that is a big one. Tigo Lant, massive talent, by the way, alongside Adli. Benacer is in there still. Theo Hernandez, Tomori, Petrauda, Magnon, and then their captain is going to be Romagnoli. That is going to be something special to play against. I can already sense that Rafa Leao is going to cause me some trouble, and that defensive line is very, very good, except maybe Romagnoli, who might be old at this stage, which we hopefully can use to our benefit because I think our Icelandic strikers are going to be faster than him. Years and years of this youth academy being built up. Wow, that stadium has some nice effects. I didn't... Where did that come from? I feel like it's the first time I'm experiencing something, uh, experiencing something like that. Anyways, we are going to be jumping into this game and we're going to be beating AC Milan. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Rafa Leal sprinting through as I expected. We need to stop this man, but we cannot apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah, thankfully he stops himself. Down the left. Inside. There goes the pass. Into Jensen. Let's just smack it on his left. Beautiful shot to start things off with. Come on, buddy. Step up. Yep, let's go. Axelsson. Over to Anderson. He has the tiki-taka. 
Here goes Pedersen. Oh, very close, buddy. I want you guys in the comments down below to let me know if you are actually from any of the Nordic countries. Which one are you from? Where do you live? How does it feel when you have like half a year of darkness? I, I feel like in Iceland and Norway, if I'm not mistaken, in the north, you have like half a year where it's like complete darkness. I might be wrong. That's not Pedersen, bro. Watch this. Bang. <gasps> It actually worked out. What a shot. They clear the ball out. And there is Larsen with the number 10 on his back. Just with 48 long shots. Are you kidding? Bro, how did you pull that off? That is one of the most perfect shots you will ever see. Oh. Step up. Huge save. But I gave away a pen. Mate, unnecessary stuff for me there. I was thinking maybe I can go ahead and block the shot. Instead, he takes the shot. We make a huge save, and it's all worth nothing. A penalty given away. Here comes Takekubo. He's going to go bottom left. It's 1-1. AC Milan straight back into the game. 25 minutes in. It's a nice back and forth here so far. Yes, nice steal. Off we go. Running in. Pedersen. Come on, Pedersen. Can you strike it from there? What is that question? Of course he can. 55 minutes in. The man who has been carrying this squad for years now steps up with a beauty of a finish. Let's see that replay. Gave Mike Magnon no chance there. Quality passing play leading into probably the best finish of the day. Even though, yes, the long shot was insane. The angle on this was so tough, and he played it perfectly. Yes, he did. All the way to the right and inside. Here's Pedersen again. Lovely football. This is what we love to see. Inside. Inside, buddy. Pedersen somehow still holding on. Beautiful. Over and across to the left. Inside now. Running through. Jensen sees the room for a back heel into Pedersen. Who goes for it and Magnon is forced to make a huge save in the 85th. Yes. Jensen. Pedersen is open. He's trying something fancy and it nearly worked out to the 90th minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Pedersen is through again. He's going. He sees Jensen at the far post. He wanted that for his buddy. But hey, you know what? Let's lob this ball in. Get the most out of it. Pedersen, I see you there. Show me the acrobatic side of your game. And he actually injured himself. <laughs> Lads, that is the end. 2-1 it is. AC Milan have been beaten. The Nordic Youth Academy with Silkeborg. The combination worked perfectly. Kinnunen, the centre-back, is going to be the one lifting the trophy. Guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in. I've had a blast here. And you know what? In about... 37 days time i am moving to a different country it's gonna be a madness the content on this channel is gonna change positively in an incredible way something i've been waiting for for such a long time i cannot wait to bring that content to you so let's stay patient it's gonna come and i'm 100 sure you're gonna love it thank you so much for watching i'll catch you on the next one take care and peace